This video was brought to you by Incogni. 2023 was a rough year for streaming. Netflix made about 130 fewer shows versus 2022. Amazon announced that they were firing several hundred people over at Prime and MGM. Disney announced that their total Disney Plus losses reached $11 billion. And 2024 is set to be yet another turbulent year. So let's run through how we got here. The six big trends expected in 2024 and which streamers could win big as a result of them. Before we get into the trends, let's rewind to work out how we got here. Because ultimately, this is all kind of Netflix's fault. Or it's thanks to Netflix, depending on how you look at it. Regardless, when Netflix entered streaming, they were the studio's best friend, as studios made tons of money just licensing content to Netflix. However, as Netflix grew and they began to change audiences' preferences and habits, it started to spook those same studios, paving the way to a world where everyone has a streaming service, whether we like it or not. Now, this created a problem for Netflix. Not only did they face new competitors, but the studios also stopped licensing them as much content, as they instead hoarded it for their own platforms. To hedge against this, Netflix boosted their original content investment, spending billions of dollars to develop tons of new content. It wasn't just Netflix desperately trying to fill their roster, though. The other studios, with their shiny new streaming services, also needed content. That's because if you're going to keep people subscribed year-round, you can't just have occasional big releases. You need a constant flow of content. And that's what led streamers like Disney Plus to commission loads of content using their existing IP. However, following COVID, those studios began to reappraise their budgets, and when they did, they quickly realized that thanks to their desperate attempts to keep up, they'd spent billions on content, which wasn't earning them very much money in return. Which brings us to 2024. Today, many executives promise that they've already hit peak losses, with profitability right round the corner. But it could be too late. As we see it, there are six major trends which streamers could follow this year in order to reach profitability. So let's run through them one by one, and as we go, award points based on who's most likely to benefit from the trends, leading to a very rough ranking of who's most likely to win 2024. Throughout 2023, premium video platforms, or PVOD, seriously began rolling out ad-supported versions of their services. Now, these new tiers of membership allow customers to pay less in exchange for an ad-filled experience. Now, this helped not only secure customers who weren't able or willing to keep paying full price, but it also provided superb cover to allow streaming services to subtly push up the price of their existing ad-free tiers. As such, throughout 2023, we can expect this trend to continue, with advertisers spending more on streaming and streamers squeezing viewers to maximize revenue. In fact, insider intelligence data suggests that the number of streamers earning more than a billion dollars from advertising alone is set to jump from four in 2023 to seven. At the same time, we've also seen huge growth in fast channels. That's free streaming services, which entirely rely on adverts. And these have proven to be immensely popular, with more than half of consumers in the US saying that they use these services. And it makes sense, too. As paid streaming services begin to get stuffed with ads, why not just pay nothing and watch a couple more ads? This was illustrated by the huge success of Jury Duty on Amazon's Freebie in 2023. Success which is expected to become more common in 2024, as Paramount, Amazon and Fox pour more money into their respective fast channels. Now, I'm going to give one point to Paramount and Amazon for their fast offerings. Then I'm going to reward another point to all of the services with ad-supported tiers, and a bonus point for Netflix for having the strongest trajectory in advertising. When streaming services first emerged, one of their selling points was that it allowed you to unbundle. Because, unlike cable, you only paid for what you actually wanted. The problem is that this never-ending list of streamers gets expensive, and as such, there's a push among some to re-bundle. 
The idea is that by teaming up, services can offer a better value prop and increase stickiness. A good example of this is Disney, who have long offered bundles for their services. The thought is that rather than only subscribing when your favourite show is airing, you could stick around for a bundle of shows and services. In fact, in many markets, Hulu content is already bundled into Disney+, Plus, broadening the appeal of the whole service beyond just kids and geeks. And Disney is doing this in the US too, with them starting to roll out their one-app experience. But it's not just them, everyone is at it. Verizon recently announced a $10 Netflix and Max bundle. Paramount and Apple are apparently in talks. Paramount offers a bundle for Walmart Plus subscribers. Peacock has a bundle for Instacart and Delta. And of course, Prime Video was the innovator in this space, always bundled with Prime memberships. In fact, at this stage, 70% of people get at least some of their subscriptions through bundles. To be honest, this could go much further than bundles in 2024, with the discussion of mergers which could see entire companies and services merge, as WBD did to produce Max in 2023. Now, I'm going to give the newly bundled Max and the soon-to-be one-app Disney Plus and Hulu two points, and everyone else can have one point. They've all made moves in this space, but no one's truly mastered it. And some of these services might not even make it to the end of 2024 because of it. Now, you can't have a list of trends in 2024 without AI. When it comes to streaming specifically, though, they're hoping that they can analyze user data to better predict what you'll want to watch, as well as helping them to produce more engaging programming. The thing is, though, it's hard to judge who's doing the best here. All of the streamers have a lot of potential, but until we start seeing the fruits of this labor, it's hard to actually grade them. That said, I'll throw one point Netflix's way, who at least publish a ton of information and research papers about how they use AI and machine learning. Until recently, sports was the preserve of expensive cable packages. But over the last couple of years, some services have started streaming premium sports, in an attempt to attract sports fans to their services. YouTube TV spent $2 billion to acquire NFL Sunday Ticket, outbidding Disney, Amazon, and Apple. Prime saw Thursday Night Football viewership rise 25% over the last season, with them also spending big on football, cricket, tennis, and rugby rights. Apple has also spent hard on the MLS, bringing major attention to the streamer and the league alike. Such is this phenomenon that even Disney are reportedly considering launching a fully-fledged, standalone ESPN streaming app in 2025, with the company previously concerned that doing so would damage their hugely profitable and very expensive ESPN cable bundles. Perhaps the biggest winner right now, though, is Peacock, who hosted the first ever streaming-exclusive NFL wildcard game this January. That game between the Miami Dolphins and Kansas City Chiefs became the biggest live-streamed event in US history, reaching nearly 28 million viewers. It's clear then that sports move the needle here, and with that seemingly proven, streamers are likely to continue investing in sports to boost viewership and sign-ups. As such, I'm awarding Peacock three points for their recent success, as well as the potential it has going forward given the strong relationship that NBC has with the NFL, and how happy the league was with their recent success. Amazon gets two points in this category for their long-term and continued investment, while I'll give Paramount one point for their NFL and international football coverage, largely thanks to their sister company CBS, which gives them the potential to copy the Peacock model. Now, Disney could have scored big here had they moved some of their endless ESPN coverage and huge licensing deals properly onto streaming. But until they do, they might have a lot of potential, but they score no points. We all know that classic shows like The Office, Seinfeld and Friends all still hold massive appeal, with millions of people still streaming these classics. However, last year really demonstrated the growing power of a streaming rerun. The best example of this was the meteoric success of USA Network Suits on Netflix, a show that stopped airing in 2019 and arguably lost its way far earlier. 
Regardless, after entering Netflix's US catalog for the first time last year, it became a phenomenon once again. Now, a number of streaming services have old shows they can capitalize on, but Netflix looks like it has the most to gain from this. The Suits incident showed studios that by selling their old catalog to the streaming giant, they could not only generate a load of money, but also capture a ton of attention from Netflix's huge subscriber base. Attention which they could then redirect towards new seasons, reboots, or offshoots, with NBC doing this with Suits right now. This is a win-win for studios, but when it comes to streaming services, the true winner is only Netflix, hence me awarding them alone two points. It's not just the old stuff though. Producing the right new shows, especially as we see a pullback in spending, has never been more vital. Unfortunately though, it's hard to predict exactly what will be a hit. Regardless, to award our final points, let's use Variety's analysis of the most anticipated shows in 2024. Now, these could be terrible, critics might slate them, but at least for the moment, these shows have the audience's attention. The streamer with the most shows on this list is Netflix, with eight shows on the most anticipated list, while Disney's slate across Disney Plus and Hulu also has eight shows on the list. But perhaps most interestingly, most of these land on Hulu rather than on D+. Overall then, at least according to this, let's be honest, very ropey scoring system, Netflix is set up best for 2024. With other studios struggling and Netflix finding its financial footing after relatively successfully rolling out advertising and attempting to end password sharing, Netflix is well placed to begin scooping up other studios' content once again. A combined Disney and Hulu also do score highly, but Disney's appetite for streaming does seem to be declining. The same is also true for the relatively highly scoring Peacock, which also costs its parent company a lot more than it pulls in, which could lead them to consider a sale, bundle, less focus, or even a full death. And I guess the only way we'll really know is by waiting until the end of the year. While you've been watching this video, you might not realize that shady forces are working in the background to collect personal data from various sites and bundle it together, ready to sell to a third party. These data brokers can sell this bundle of information about you to anyone from a company to an online criminal. Now, you might assume that you're safe online, perhaps you change your password regularly, or perhaps you're a hawk and always uncheck the box that signs you up for annoying newsletters. Unfortunately though, this doesn't completely save you. Companies that hold your data can still fall victim to a data breach, meaning that those data brokers can still compile information about you to sell on to others. And this is where our sponsor, Incogni, comes in. They reach out to those data brokers on your behalf, request that any data is removed and deal with any problems that might arise. In fact, they're tenacious and will put in multiple data removal requests even after your data has been removed to ensure that it never goes back on the market. So create an account with the link in our descriptions, grant Incogni the ability to work on your behalf and sit back as they make you safer. Plus, if you use our link, you'll get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Thanks for checking it out, and thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video.